Hey guys, Chaotic Confusion here, and welcome back to Dark Knight. And we just kind of uh, finished a, I guess, field trip with our class or what have you. Uh, that took us into a supposedly demon-haunted forest, although we didn't see any demons. We did see a uh, weird dude in a cave, but uh, not exactly a demon. So I guess we are uh, back at our room now after that whole adventure, so we will see what... I guess just see what happens next, if we'll maybe go and explore the old abandoned house or something, or if we get, uh, if that creepy underclassman tries to, I don't know what he was trying to do, bother us again, I guess, but, uh, so we can go ahead and get started, I guess. Don't have any unsafe progress. It has been a long day. My heat, feet hurt from all the walking. I'm still curious about what secrets the forest has. That crimson-haired guy in particular bothers me. He doesn't look like a tourist and seems to know the area well. He wasn't dressed like a tour guide either. Not that I've heard about any tours in the forest. Digging into it makes me more confused. Perhaps I should stop here. Like he said, it is none of my business. There's no use fretting over it. Even as one mystery fades, however, another one appears. The abandoned house from yesterday pops up in my mind. I did plan on going there again, and it's not raining today. I glance at the time. It reads 8 p.m. It's already dark outside. My feet still hurt, but the house isn't that far. I grab my jacket once I decide to go. I wasn't trying to. Can we not... The streets are completely empty, making the village seem like it has been abandoned. Everyone must already be home. I didn't finish that. A few minutes later, I reach the old house. Okay, stop. I'm not sure if this is faster or slower. I actually had before where I had to click it to make it go forward, so I'm not sure why... It's, uh... Not sure why it's actually going forward all by itself, because I didn't change any settings. I don't know if these are reducing the tech speed and stuff, or... I guess we'll see. The previous owner must have been very rich to afford building this- whoa! Okay, too fast. Go this way. That turn it off. Nope. Oh. I expect the big chains locking the doors. <laughs> now I got the uh, text really slow. Right. They're not old and rusty like I expected. They seem like they were put on recently. Perhaps the residence has a new owner. Suddenly I hear a sigh from behind me. I quickly turn around to locate the source of the sound. There is someone sitting on the edge of the fountain. He blends so well with the dreary mist that I had not noticed him when I first entered. I slowly approach the man. Up close I notice he is wearing a familiar uniform. Seems like he is from the same school as me, but I've never seen him before. His uniform design is not one I recognize. Perhaps he is part of the elite class, like Akuya's, Akuya's brother. I can't even talk. Good grief. Each elite student wears a custom design uniform, making it difficult to be certain they even attend our school. To complement their unique uniforms, the elite class also has special rules, but I never bothered looking into them. Its members hardly appear at school, so only a few of us have ever seen their faces. Needless to say, there are many rumors about that class. According to Akuya, you need to have very high grades to qualify, but there might be more to it than that. Many students envy their status. Um, hello? The guy flinches and looks at me startled. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. 
Oh, I do not mind. My apologies for not noticing you earlier. May I stay here? Be my guest. Would he be the shadow I saw yesterday? Uh, do you come here often? It sounds like a cheesy pickup line, but I don't know what else to say. I do. This place has an interesting atmosphere. He looks away from me, the warm copper of his gaze thoughtful. Something about him feels... off. I'm not sure, but is he sad? I can't really read his expression. What about you? Well... Uh... I can't tell him that I came to investigate just because I saw something strange yesterday. It sounds so weird. I never noticed how interesting this place was before, so I thought I'd come take a closer look. At this hour? I like going for walks at night. Heh. <laughs> Likewise. The man's expression clears up and he smiles. Would you like to go for a walk with me then? Sure. Odd that someone would offer to go for a walk with a person they've just met. He does seem friendly and polite though. Or maybe it's odd that we would accept the offer to go for a person we've just met. <laughs> he stands up and we follow a path through the garden. Unlike the rest of the garden, this path is not covered with weeds. The ground is even and well trod. As we walk, he points out the statues hidden away by the weeds as well as unusual flowers I have not seen before. He does it so naturally, it's as if he owns this place. The moonlight and the starry sky illuminate the view, which makes it even more beautiful. I never expected to find beauty in an abandoned place like this. The man smiles mysteriously at my comment. I seem to know a lot about this mansion. I would be happy to answer any questions you have. You know who put the chains on the doors? His eyes swivel away from mine again. The man hesitates to speak. I seem to have found my answer. I do not know about it. I guess he comes here often, but he doesn't want to admit it. He looks flustered. Maybe I shouldn't push any further right now. It's getting late. I should go home. Have a good night. As I head back to the front yard, I realize that I have not asked for the man's name. I turn back and try to find him, but he's already gone. Yep, another mysterious guy. The weekend finally arrives. In the morning, I make myself breakfast and sit on the couch. While chewing on some toast, I open the newspaper. It used to be full of advertisements, but now it actually has decent news articles. I browse through, hoping to find something interesting. Who actually reads the paper? I mean, I know some people read the paper, but... I don't really know anybody who's not older that reads the paper, I guess. Not an actual physical paper, I mean like online articles and stuff. My eyes stop at a page with numerous sketches. The reports of missing persons are increasing. In just a few days, it has reached a point where the police can no longer suppress the public outcry. The thought of someone I know suddenly disappearing is scary. I study their profiles and trying to find a commonality, but there does not seem to be one. Age, gender, appearance, occupation, address? No, nothing adds up. This is going nowhere. I recognize some of these people, but I don't think they knew each other. Then again, if it was that easy, the cops would have solved the case already. I doubt people disappear without a trace. They must have gone into hiding or were kidnapped. These crimes, or whatever they are, have to stop at some point. How long can this go on? I flip a page and find an article about a suspected homicide. A local reported that she heard a distressed scream late at night. Witness, the attacker ran off when I reached the scene. I wanted to go after them, but noticed the victim was still alive. I called the emergency number immediately. I didn't leave the woman's side until an ambulance arrived. I can't believe someone did such an inhumane thing. This is unforgivable. Further details on this case are below. Attached to the article is a blurry photo the witness took of the suspect with her cell phone. Nothing about their appearance is distinguishable. It will be hard to identify them. 
The description says the victim had been missing for a week before the incident took place. And then they were just out in public? That is very odd. Hmm, I put the newspaper aside and take a sip of my tea. Rumors spread quickly in this village, no matter how grisly they are. Probably the grislier the faster they spread, I mean honestly. Even so, those same rumors become trails... I have suddenly forgot how to read. Even so, those same rumors become trails that lead back to the criminals, allowing the crimes to be solved just as quickly. I want to help down... I want to help track down these people, but... I'm not sure I'd make a difference. For now, I should keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Situational awareness! I absentmindedly eat the rest of my breakfast. I should take a walk to clear my mind. Going to the park sounds like a good idea. I look up at the bright blue sky. Gentle winds blow puffy clouds about. It actually looks kind of dark outside because of the way the bu buildings are silhouetted. Like it's just becoming evening as opposed to being morning. As I walk down the road, an advertisement on a building catches my attention. Wanted exorcists. Exorcists? Do ghosts even exist? Announcement. Recently, there have been sightings of ghosts within the village. We are looking for exorcists to deal with them. Hey, do you think the guy at the abandoned house is a ghost? Seriously? I don't think anything remotely supernatural has ever happened here. And now people are supposedly seeing apparitions? Sightings of ghosts. Sure. The park is practically empty, despite it being the middle of the afternoon. There is only one other person, a boy, on the entire block. He seems to have noticed me too, but I do not pay further attention to it. I sit on a nearby bench and close my eyes, enjoying the silence. Weird things are happening in this village. It's interesting, but a bit disconcerting too. I hope Ryoji and Ikuya are safe. Ugh, this is my day off. I didn't come here to find new things to worry about. The wind blows gently on my cheeks while I enjoy the warm sunlight on my skin. I clear my mind of all thoughts and focus on my breathing. They say this technique helps you to relieve stress. Hmm. A moment later, a figure blocks the sunlight. My path. I open my eyes and notice a silver-haired boy standing in front of me. Excuse me, miss. Yes? Can you tell me where the haunted house is? Haunted house? I've never heard of one around here. I'm sure it's supposed to be nearby, but I can't find it. I recall the advertisement from earlier. Only exorcists or horror junkies would act actively seek haunted houses. He looks too young to get a job, but the alternative seems more unlikely. Why are you searching for it? Are you an exorcist? The boy looks confused, blinking innocently. No, do exorcists normally live around here? I don't know, but I just saw an advertisement looking for applications. The boy purses his lips, his expression flustered. Is something wrong? I must find the haunted house. Before I can say anything, the boy runs away. Alright, I wonder what that was about. I pull out a booklet from my pocket and start to read. It's a romance novel that I borrowed from Makuya. I don't like romance novels. Why can't it be sci-fi or fantasy or something? Even though just this genre is not my cup of tea, she insisted that I would enjoy it. But I don't like romance novels. I expect something cheesy from the start, but so far nothing romantic has happened. The story feels more like a slice of life tea. Perhaps that's why Akuya recommended it. Still not really my cup of tea, as she says. Suddenly, the sky becomes cloudy. Ugh, is it going to rain again already? Time to go home, then. As I'm leaving the park, I notice a boy from earlier lying on the ground, his face against the dirt. Did he collapse? Quickly, I go to him and kneel down. Hey, are you okay? What happened? Uh, I don't have much time. Uh... What do you mean? The boy passes out before he can reply. Hey, don't pass out here. Ugh, what should I do? How about calling an ambulance? that That's usually a good thing when somebody passes out. I panic as I look around, but nobody else is in the park. I have no way to place an emergency call. Thankfully, he does not look so bad. Where's your cell phone? Who doesn't have a cell phone nowadays? 
I have no choice. I can't leave him here when it's about to rain. The clouds become darker with every passing minute. When I look up, I can feel cold raindrops on my face. I manage to carry the boy to a dry spot under a tree. I'm surprised by how easy it is. He weighs less than you would assume by looking at him. Why did he faint? Does he have some sort of illness? Maybe I should take him to a hospital. That might be a good idea. Well, it'll have to wait until the rain stops. I don't want to risk him getting any sicker. I don't know. If somebody passed out and said they didn't have much time left, I might risk the rain. The rain creates a curtain around the tree, a few drops sneaking between the leaves to land on us. This is an unlucky day. I bow my head to look at the boy. Aw, he has such an adorable baby face. How old could he be? I bet he's way younger than me. His hair looks so soft, I want to touch it. Creepy! The boy slowly opens his eyes. Are you okay? The boy mumbles something before closing his eyes again. Hey! Worried, I gently shake his shoulder to wake him up. He immediately opens his eyes and crawls away from me. So sorry, I thought... Oh, it's you. I, uh, right. Rubbing the back of his neck, he looks away, embarrassed. He's an odd one, but kind of cute. It's okay. Do you feel any better? Yes, I'm fine. The boy fixes his scarf and pats down his hair. He beams reassuringly at me. The boy looks up at the gray sky, surprised by what he sees. Raining? I could have sworn it was sunny earlier. The downpour started right after you passed out. Oh, right. Thanks for taking care of me. He turns towards me and gives me a warm smile. Let's wait here until it stops raining. Hmm. Are you really okay? I got worried when I saw you on the ground. I thought something happened to you. Uh... Oh, it's not a big deal. I'm just a little tired. Nothing to worry about. Despite saying he doesn't have much time left. Passing out from exhaustion is very serious. We should get you to a doctor. N no I feel a lot better now. He shakes his head and wildly waves around his arms. I raise a brow. I suspect he's afraid of doctors. Even so, I can't force him to go anywhere. What's your name? Sekiro. Nice to meet you, Sekiro. Sekiro, you can call me Chaotic. You mentioned a haunted house before. Can you tell me more about it? It's just a regular place, but people say it's haunted for some reason. Wouldn't you normally try to stay away from a place like that? It's just... I've lost something important here. Means you've been there before. Yeah, but I don't remember much. Can you tell me what you've lost? Uh... Just something important to me. Mm, Sekiro. Yes? Before you passed out, you said something like, I don't have much time. What did you mean? I did? Yeah. Kiro scratches his head. I just need to find my something quickly. <laughs> I see. We sit side by side and watch the rain. I glance over at the boy. I don't know what happened, but he looks less pale than before. He seems to be enjoying the sight before us. Before long, the weather clears up and the rain slowly stops. I hope you can take care of yourself. I'm going home. I will. Perhaps I can help you look for the haunted house later. Maybe it's the abandoned one. I mean, that would seem to be like a haunted house. That would be my first thought. That'd be really nice of you. I come here a lot if you ever do want to meet up. Okay, maybe I'll see you later then. See you. Well, that was weird. I do not have any real leads for the disappearances yet, but I have to catch up with the news. Perhaps I should pay attention in Mr. Blanchett's class. Maybe. The last few days have been hectic with all the strangers I've run into, but I'm glad I've made a new friend. I look at the pile of books on my desk. There's still plenty of homework to do, whether I like it or not. I have to finish it. I know a lot of the, like the, uh, not that it really matters, but the text saying like, there is, I'm turning, actually turning into contractions and saying there's. It's just something that I do, because it's funny, when I write, I tend to skip a lot of contractions for some reason, so I'll write that too, there is, you know, whatever. You know, 
There is, I have, instead of, I, you know, even though I probably wouldn't say I have to finish it, but you know what I mean. Uh, but for some reason when I read, I still make it into contractions, even though I write it the opposite way. I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, how can I work like this? I try to focus on the textbook, but my mind keeps wandering. The old house, forest demon, and odd Sekiro from the park. Even though I only spoke with them for a short time, they've piqued my curiosity. Ugh, I give up. I want to find out what's going on in the village. I wonder what Leoji's up to. Maybe I should call him. I dial his number, but the call goes go, go to me. But the call goes to his voice message. I guess that he's still busy with his club activities. I could call Akuya and tell her what happened. But it'll only get her worked up, so I brush the idea aside. I throw myself on my bed and close my eyes. Ugh, this feels a lot better. A moment later, I hear knocking on my window. Annoyed, I get up and check the source of the noise. I find myself being waved at. Whoa! Let me in! Who the hell are you and what are you doing up here? Hurry! Get down first! Just let me in! What's wrong with this guy? He scaled my house. Seriously, how can a stranger expect me to let him into my room through the window? He must be the worst burglar ever. I'm not stupid enough to fall for such an obvious trap. I ignore him and lay back down on my bed. Common sense not to let strangers in your house, especially not through the window. <laughs> I probably wouldn't just ignore him and lay him back on my bed either, but you know. The knocking stops after a moment. Seems like he's finally given up. Finally, I go back to sleep. I can't help but worry about what happened to the guy on my roof. Maybe I should check on him and get a ladder or something. Strange, I can see the window of my room, but there's no one outside. I shrug and turn back, going to my room. I'm shocked by the sight of a man laying on my bed. Dude! Oh my! Not, not probably the expression that I would use if that happened. How? You? What? How did you get in here? Are you a burglar? I'll call the police. I frantically search for my phone. Within a second, the man has me by the wrists. Kick him in the jimmies. Wait, it's a misunderstanding. Whoa. I desperately squirm around, trying to break his hold on me. That would be a no-go in that situation. I hate having my arms or hands restrained. It's just a thing of mine. Yeah, yeah definitely. That that would definitely not be a... Uh, he, he would definitely be, be getting kicked someplace. And I, he wouldn't like it. Stranger lowers his head to look me in the eyes. Calm down. Let me explain. And let go of my hands. Or my wrists. Let me go, you creep. As if I'm going to believe anything you say. I prepare to kick him, but he releases me and backs away. How did you get into my house? There was an open window in another room. Ugh, I have to be more careful. Can I stay here? The sudden request makes me speechless. What? That came out of nowhere? Are you joking? I'm serious. His expression changes instantly, earnest and almost somber. I've never met anyone who switches moods this quickly. I've met a lot of people who switch moods that quickly. No way. I don't even know you, and you attacked me. Maybe not, but I know you. And anyway, I wasn't trying to hurt you. He sighs and shakes his head. I don't remember meeting this guy. Wait, could it be? No, never mind. The, the guy from the waterfall, didn't he have similarly colored hair? Was he wearing a cross necklace too? I don't remember. Dang it. Maybe he's an exorcist. He has a cross. That's the only guy I could think of that it would be. Get out of my room, you creepy stalker. Eh, I've changed from a burglar to a stalker? Well, you did just say you knew me. Either way, you're a pervert. A burglar, a stalker, and a pervert. That really stings, you know? I grab the closest thing to me, a book, and hurl it at him. Get out of here! Go away! Wait, I wasn't finished. Get out now! He dodges my next projectile before slinking towards the window. 
<sighs> Calm down. No need to get aggressive. First, you broke into my house, and then you assaulted me. Now you ask me if you can stay here? My answer is obvious. <laughs> Nothing wrong with asking, right? What the? Man lets out a heavy sigh. Fine, if you don't want me to stay, then gives me a sad glance before jumping out the window. Oh my lord! I didn't say you had to jump out! I rushed to the window only to find the weirdo smirking at me from the ground. Aw, you really do care about me. You jerk. Don't you dare come here again! Who knows what the future holds? Well, see you later. My eyes follow the figure as he walks toward the street and out of sight. I'm relieved that he did not break anything, though my heart is still racing from shock. The first time I've met such a bad prankster, these days are getting weirder and weirder. He didn't seem all that dangerous, though. He left easily enough. Wait a second, something is off. Why did he go to such lengths to get into my house? I know it's easy to climb to the landing, but this is just odd. I wonder what his intentions were. I shake my head and sigh. More questions bubble up as I think. Calm down, Chaotic. You shouldn't dwell on this. Maybe a little bit of dwelling might be okay. That's kind of weird. The weekend passes quickly and I'm back at school on Monday. My mind is filled with flashbacks from the past few days. I met a suspicious forest dweller, a mysterious gentleman, and a frail younger boy. Not to mention that weirdo who snuck into my house. I can't help but find such an odd, suspicious people interesting. Hmm... Boo! Ah, kill ya! <laughs> I called after you a few times, silly. Were you asleep? Sorry, I didn't hear you. You should try to stay awake during class. But the lectures are so boring. Mr. Blanchett is so repetitive. Oh really? He explained some useful things this time. Like what? Nope, you should have been listening. Anyway, do you have any plans for the day? Well, I'm thinking about scoping out a mansion. Oh, tell me more. You know, the road to the library? Of course, what about it? There's a creepy old mansion in that neighborhood. It never struck me before, but don't you think it's strange that it's been abandoned for so long? Nobody thought of revamping or demolishing it, even when it's empty? That's a good point. I've heard a few rumors about the place before, but I haven't looked into them much. What was that shadow I saw that really has me intrigued? That old mansion is part of the many legends of this village. All I know is that it used to belong to the Henrigi family, though. I don't even think anyone owns it right now. Could have sworn I heard something else during history class about more vi village legends. <laughs> Suddenly interested in history, huh? I probably shouldn't involve Akuya in this further. I know she hates haunted places. Did you hear about that murder the teachers keep gossiping? Oops. Did you hear about that murder the teachers keep gossiping about? They say the suspect is someone who moved into the village not too long ago. I think they're wrong, though. Everyone always uses the outsiders as scapegoats. That tends to happen. What do you mean? The old folks quickly came to the conclusion that the culprit must have been someone who moved to this village not long ago. Don't you think that's too unfair? I don't think so. It narrows down the list of possible suspects. Hi, Leoji. It makes sense because no one knows the newcomers very well. They're naturally the most suspicious for now. We are a small community, so it's easy to tell when and why things change. You can't see what lies below the surface. The OG's method does narrow down possible suspects, but I don't agree with using new residents as scapegoats. I'm helping my dad with this case. He asked me to collect a list of people who moved into the village within the last six months. If anyone comes to mind, let me know. It'd really help us out. I have my doubts about your method, but I'll let you know if I think of anyone. Thanks for the help. Chaotic, you can stay over at my place while they're investigating. You live alone, right? You should seriously think about it. I forgot about that, the fact that my parents were gone. That would make the people breaking in even more creepy. Heh, 
I'm fine. Thanks for the offer, though. Well, I guess that was the end of the demo. Just when it was starting to get interesting. But, uh... Alright, you're being noisy now. There, now it's not so noisy for me, at least. Um... I am kind of interested in, uh... Well, that doesn't necessarily look so good. I'm interested in what's going to be happening, uh, next. I don't know how long it's going to take for the, uh... For the rest of the game to come out, or if it's just going to come out in chapters, or what exactly is going to happen. But uh, it is getting rather interesting. I uh, I am curious as to all the different strangers and stuff like that. Apparently, according to these flashes on the screens and stuff, we might have some romance choices and stuff. You think this is a game? You I, I missed that word. Anyway, yeah, it looks like it's going to be, uh, ooh, red eyes. Quite interesting. At least I think it's going to be quite interesting, so I'm interested to see what the, what's happening when the rest of it comes out. Um, I think I'll have to, uh, have to, wait, what happened? Is there more? I stare at the ceiling while lying on the couch. I think about what Akuya and Leoji said earlier. Someone not from this village? Just in these past few days, I've met four new people. But yet, I didn't tell him. Any of them could have moved here around the same time those disappearances started. It's possible that one of them is involved. Against my better judgment, I can't help but want to investigate them further on my own. The excitement is overwhelming. Ooh. I guess it's not over. There's just a random break in the middle. Maybe that was like the, uh... Maybe, like, the first part was the prologue, and now this is, like, the first chapter. That could be it! Alright, who should I investigate first? Hmm. Well, I am very interested in the boy from the park, but the person who snuck into my room is... Kind of, uh... I don't know, he just seems the most interesting at this moment, I'm not sure why. Not that the uh, ones that, not that the first two aren't interesting either, but I want to find out about the person who jumped into my room. Hmm, he was really suspicious. An image of him pops up on my mind. Yes, I should investigate him. Could it be him? He was acting pretty weird after all. I don't know if necessarily he's the one behind the disappearances, I'm just more curious about him in general. I told him not to come back, but I don't know, don't know if there's a chance of encountering him again. I tried to recall his appearance, but he did not have any unique features. Yeah, I would be in trouble with that, because I have a horrible time remembering faces and names. Um, especially because, especially if I, like, get used to somebody in an area, and then I see them outside that area. And it's like, okay, they look kind of familiar, but where do I know them from? And then they'll, like, be saying hi to me, and I'll be like, hi... And be thinking, I have no idea who the heck you are. <laughs> so, yeah. Unfortunately, that's just one of the, uh... I don't know why I have such trouble recalling people's names and faces, but I just do. Now that I think about it, however... However? However, he had a strange sense of fashion. I've never met anyone who dressed the way he did. Oh well, no use fretting over it now. I'm sure I'll recognize him if I see him again. I should be able to find him, given how small the village is. Chapter 1. Visits. It is Chapter 1. The first part was a prologue. Did it say that? Maybe it said that. I don't remember now. I was actually half asleep when I recorded that other one. But I had, was not having a lot of time to record last week. And so, uh, I guess earlier this week, technically. Yeah. I wanted to get something done, but I swear I was like half falling asleep through that episode, so I don't even remember half the stuff that happened. I'm kind of being reminded of it through, as you know, as I play, but it's probably not a good idea to record when you're like half asleep. 
Okay, the next day I wake up from a strange dream about the brown-haired guy from yesterday. He waved at me with a blood-stained hand that whispered something to... and whispered something to... It's our secret. Something like or something to the effect of or something. I don't even know if that's going to come through my mic. <laughs> it's our secret. My voice doesn't tend to be picked up by my mic very well, I've noticed. Just the settings that I have it at so I'm not picking up like all the outside noises. Or technically, I guess, because of the way I'm recording. Uh, 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 like outside noises would be kind of that way, but that way. Yeah, anyway. Um, I don't know why I have such trouble remembering that I have to point in different directions for the way that my camera is going to be facing on the screen. I'm just weird. To me, my door is right here. Like, literally, I can knock on it right there. I'm surprised I didn't make my dog bark just now. <laughs> but if I'm pointing on the, uh, on the camera, I would have to point that way because technically for that it would be that way. But anyway... I have a very narrow recording space. It's like I'm hitting my the blanket that I have on this side and here and my other hand is literally on my door. And since my since I'm only like five three, that's like a four foot space. And like I can touch the back of my recording thing right there. It's a very tiny, tiny room. Anyway, I totally got off track. <laughs> that had nothing to do with anything. Uh yeah. Oh, I was saying because my, I, I, since this is a small room and it's easier to hear noises outside since I don't really have any noise proofing or anything in here. I have my mic that, where it picks up the noises. I have it set to a pretty narrow range so I have to remember to talk loud. But then it doesn't always pick me up if I'm trying to whisper and stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, continuing on. I do not remember what happened after that. Even though it was just a dream, it worries me. My mind's filled with thoughts about everything that's happened recently. I scratch my head and sigh. Why does my nose always get so itchy when I come in here? He's just a weirdo. If he had been a murderer, he would have killed me the moment when we met. After taking a few deep breaths, I eventually calm down and crawl out of my bed. I prepare to leave for school. As usual, when I arrive at school, Kuya greets me with an enthusiastic smile. He one of the reasons why I was thinking that maybe the part before was like the end is because I think that, uh, um, I just totally forgot what the word is that I'm looking for. Oh, the, uh, the executable file to start the game says it's a demo. So I'm not actually sure if it's a de you know, like how far this game goes before it ends. Uh, as usual- oh, I already read that part. We chit-chat a little bit- a little before Leoji joins us. I notice he is unusually moody. Hey, Leoji, what's wrong? He lets out a sigh, but then forces himself to answer. The rumors about the murders are making me sick. Those people are just spreading lies. Just because it's the investigators haven't solved them yet, people assume they are slacking off. The whole procedure doesn't happen in a day. People think solving a crime is so easy. It's not. Some people are even claiming the cops are involved with the murder itself. While possible, prob probably not. Well, in this game I have no idea, but... All this nonsense is making it harder for us. I feel especially bad for my dad. Kuya puts her arm around Leoji's shoulder. Theo, just ignore them. Leoji sighs bitterly and shakes his head. Even my friends are complaining about it. I can't stand listening to them. We're not complaining about it. You still have us. At least you have two good friends on your side. See? Huh. <laughs> Which friends are you talking about? Oh, that's just cold, dude. Kuya crosses her arms and looks at Leoji. You don't consider us your friends? Hmm, let me think. Kuya punches Leoji. Ow! Stop! I was kidding! Be honest, the murder case has me curious. Nothing like that ever happened before. This village is peaceful and not very exciting. Every day was the same as any other. Like time rewound after midnight, but now the disappearances and murder case has changed that. 
Despite that, I'm not pleased by these events. If I can, I would if I can, I would like to find the culprit behind them. After class ends, I pack my bag and prepare to go home. On my way home, I keep thinking about the guy who broke into my room. It still bothers me. I don't know how or why he did. Actually, we do know how he did it. We just don't know why he did it. I hear a familiar voice calling my name, breaking me out of my thoughts. Hey, are you ignoring me? I turn around and see Leoji right behind me. A little surprised, I step back. How long have you been there? Leoji rubs the back of his neck as he raises an eyebrow. Not long. Jeez, you should pay attention to your surroundings. That's true. Let your guard down and some creep might attack you. Again. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I mumble to, I mumble to myself and hit his arm play for, playfully. So what are you still doing here? Aren't you going home? Well, I was wondering if you want to walk home together. His suggestion catches, catches me off guard. It has been months since we have walked home together. Yoji has been so busy with club activities that I barely see him after class. Doing it again after so long would be nice. Of course. We walk home side by side. I don't know what we talk, what we can talk about, mostly because I'm not sure what he has been up to recently. There are many things I can ask. Don't you have club activities after school? I've decided to skip them for today. I feel too tired to stay at school any longer. Besides, it feels like we haven't talked much lately. <laughs> you have duties as a class president. I get that you're busy. I'm sorry for dumping that role on you. I didn't feel suited for it. Nah, I wouldn't like to be class president. It's definitely not me. It's still a bad excuse for spending less time with my friends. I took the role, so it's my responsibility now. You say so. This might be out of the blue. But is it just me, or have we all changed since our first year? That tends to happen. Even Akuya is busy with her own stuff now. Yoji looks up at the sky with a melancholic expression, as though looking at something nostalgic. To be honest, I feel the same way. But if everything is better this way, then we shouldn't let, or then we should let it be. Paths meet, cross, and separate. We don't have to cling to the same future. You should follow whatever your heart desires. You must be joking. The chaotic I know doesn't let go of relationships that easily. Maybe I've changed. Well, to me, you haven't changed at all. Hmm. <laughs> You're saying that now, but I think you and I feel the same way. No, it's true. Though I do realize what my character is saying is true. I, I do tend to, uh... I don't, uh... I don't know if I would try to let go of relationships that easily, especially when I was that age. But, uh, that's okay. Sorry about my attitude. I got too caught up with things and forgot what I really want to do. Could be that you left me because you thought it was best for me. That's possible. I miss old times with you and Akuya. We should hang out together again like we used to. Yes, we should. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to apologize. It's not like anyone's at fault. It's been a while since I've seen this side of Leoji. Walking home with him brings back memories. I didn't think he cared this much about our friendship. All this time I tried not to get in his way. Perhaps I was the one who didn't care enough. Because Leoji lives further than I, we part ways when we reach my neighborhood, and I walk the rest of the way home by myself. I'm home. Boy, it took me a long time to get home. It looks like it's dark outside already. Obviously, there's no reply, but I still do it out of habit. I feel hungry, so I think about preparing dinner right away. What shall I make today? Something easy like sushi, or should I go for curry? How about sushi, because I don't actually like curry. I can't actually eat that much sushi either, because... I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that I can only eat small amounts of before the taste gets to me. It's not that the taste is bad necessarily, but it's just... I guess it's kind of strong... I mean, not even, not even all sushi is strong. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I don't like curry. <laughs> Let's see what I have. As I head to the kitchen, noises from upstairs make me freeze. The sounds of opening and closing doors. It could have been the wind, but because of the rumors, I'm extra cautious. Where's a baseball bat when you need one? Could it be the stalker again? It's strange, because I'm sure that I locked all the windows today. 
I take an umbrella. An umbrella? Seriously? An umbrella? You don't have anything besides an umbrella? I mean, baseball bat, broom handle, something. Come on, man. I have dogs, though, so they, they would make it uh, probably less likely that somebody would break in because they bark a lot. And a bird. I also have a bird. My bird's kind of funny because you uh, walk up our front driveway and he starts squawking. So it's like nobody's ever going to sneak through our front door. I peek through the railing and notice that the light is on in my room. My heart is beating rapidly as I hold my weapon tightly. An umbrella! I'll show whoever it is that they're messing with the wrong person. Slowly, slowly I move closer and press my back against the wall beside the door. I strain my ears for footsteps. I think I can figure out their position. Like, <laughs> I do have good ears, though, so I might be able to do that. Suddenly, someone walks out of my room. Thwack! <laughs> they seem like they're about to leave. They continue heading towards the stairs, having not noticed me. I hold my umbrella firmly. Arr! Looks like I'm picking my nose on camera. Sorry about that. Jeez. Trying to scratch and about scratch my nostril off. Ow! That is not what I meant to do. I hold my umbrella firmly and lunge when the person steps within my range. Ah, stop it, I'm not... Ow! His voice sounds familiar, so I pull back. Fumbling in the darkness, I manage to find the whole light switch. The first thing I see is a guy wearing a brown cap facing away from me, and I immediately realize it's the same person who broke into my house the other day. Come to steal again, huh? I told you not to let me see your face ever again. You're not looking at my face, though. The guy turns around, keeping his distance from me. Why does he always have a, uh, like a sweat or a teardrop on his cheek? Is it like a tattoo, or...? I raise my umbrella again, but he grabs it before I can do anything else. Dude, my character is like the worst. Let go, pervert! He leans closer and covers my mouth with his hands, the force strong enough to push me back against the wall. Dude, you are so getting kicked in the jimmies. Also, why? Why stand that close? That That's just not something that you do. Honestly, she should have just called the police, because she sucks. First of all, my name is not Pervert. It's... Would it be cur Curado? Curado? I was going to say Curado. Secondly, you shouldn't scream at night. Your neighbors might think that you're being assaulted. Well, I kind of am. I give him a sharp look as if it's not obvious what he's doing right now. Okay, why is it question marks again? Because it already told me his name. Don't look at me like that. Believe it or not, I'm here to protect you. I raise my eyebrow. Like, seriously, dude? Yeah, sure. By pitting me against the wall. I try to speak, but my words are muffled. He tilts his head, unable to make out anything I'm trying to say. I'll take my hand off so you could talk, but only if you promise not to scream. Dude, I would have kicked him in the jimmies a long time ago. You don't touch me like that. <laughs> I nod and slowly he releases his grip. He lets out a deep sigh as he steps back. I cross my arms and wait for a better explanation. If you really are here to protect me, you could try acting like it. You didn't have to climb to my window the other night. It was hard to reach you, so I had to improvise. You could have knocked on the door! What are you protecting me from? You've heard about the recent killings, right? I'll get straight to the point. You might be on their target list, and I've been assigned as your private guard. Uh, by who? Hold on, you're saying that you broke into my house and assaulted me to protect me. I didn't actually break in. Uh, without permission, it counts as breaking in, no matter who does it. I shake my head and hold out my hand. Show me proof that you really are a private guard. Gerato dings into his pocket and takes out a badge, handing it to me. To my surprise, he also shows me a gun he had kept hidden under his belt. I recognize the symbol on the front of the badge. Only selected investigators have it. The OG often talks about his father's job as an investigator, how only they are permitted to carry guns and badges with the dis with the distinct symbol. Is Kirato an investigator? I take a closer look at his credentials. Kirako Hakasi? Does your family family name mean doctor? Haha, <laughs> Dr. Kirato. It's not my real family name. It was changed after I was adopted. 
I see. Huh. Does that mean you believe me, Chaotic? Hmm, maybe. It's kind of a weird thing for an investigator to do, though, you know. I give Kirado back his belongings and he keeps them, smiling confidently. Nobody told me about this, though. It's supposed to be a secret so we can trap the killer. For now, I'll be keeping an eye on you. This violates my privacy. <laughs> Maybe I went a bit too far, you think? And what were you doing in my room? Just making sure you're still here. But I wasn't in my room. I'm pretty sure professionals don't check up on their clients this often. Back there, he gave his gun to me. Not that I would have, but did he not realize that I can simply take it and shoot him? I'm stuck with an amateur guard. He could have told me so when he broke in the other night. Then again, I immediately chased him out and didn't give him a chance to explain. He could have just said, hey, I have a badge. You said I might be on a target list, but how are you so sure they'll come after me? The murderer seems to be interested in this neighborhood. The rest of my team are looking after other residents. I thought... She said that the, uh, that the, um, addresses and stuff didn't really match up. I'm sure this is shocking, but don't worry, I'll protect you. Gerardo thinks I must be scared, but instead I look at him and grin. This is the perfect opportunity. I never knew the murderer would be so close. If I could catch him... If you're watching out for the murderer, then you'll be involved sooner or later. That means we have a chance to solve this case. You're lucky to have me as a partner. Together we will... I never said you're my partner, but I want to help out. You're already helping by being a target. Thanks. I continue trying to convince him to let me help, but he does not budge. I'm told to act just as I usually do. Residents aren't supposed to work together with their guards. I'm here to ensure your safety. Professionals don't complete it your way, though. Should be thankful you even have a guard. I'm surprised an amateur like you is an investigator. I didn't have a good first impression of you, but I shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I don't expect much, but do your best. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. I give him a nonchalant look and shrug. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining the situation to me. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to sleep. You might as well go home. I told you that I'm going to watch you closely. You are not watching me while I sleep. That is just creeper territory. Watch me closely. Gerardo looks around uncomfortably, rubbing the back of his neck. I do not get why he's still hanging around, so I ask him what's bothering him. Like I asked last time, can I stay here? My jaw almost drops after hearing this. I put my hand on my face and take a deep breath. He's still insistent about that, so I guess it's not a joke. If I allowed him to stay, it might make his job protecting me easier. Still, it's unbelievable that a guy like him was assigned to me. I might actually be safer without him around. Something is strange about Curado. I just cannot pinpoint what. Why does my itch- Why does my nose itch so bad in this room? What is it about this room? I should get to know him better before jumping to conclusions. I decide to give him the benefit of doubt- Of the doubt. And let him stay. Curado is overjoyed for my- uh, for my bleh, for my decision, as if I saved his life. You sound like a homeless person. Uh, I am. Sort of. I live by myself, but I can barely pay the rent. You're brutally honest. Gerardo laughs softly at my comment. I take another look at him. For a homeless person, I wonder how he got such a high position. He's just said he has a place, he just has trouble with rent. It requires exceptional grades and abilities to become an investigator. The guy before me got taken down by a high school girl with an umbrella. Hopefully I will not regret my decision. I take Curado around my house and show him where the important rooms like the kitchen and bathroom are. We finally stop in the guest room, which is right next to my room. I kind of wonder, she said that he had a badge, but did he have like picture ID or anything? I mean, he could have just taken the badge. After that, he thanks me politely, politely and I leave him alone. It's been a long time since someone has stayed at my place. I don't know how long he'll be here, but it shouldn't be a problem. No one really checks up on me. I would not mind some company at home. My first impression of him was terrible, but that may change. I'm curious what he's got up his sleeve. Before I go to sleep, I take a quick shower. With a large towel wrapped around my body, I look at myself in the mirror. The 
Kuya has always teased me that I should interact more often with people, but I always seem to attract creeps. I must look like an easy target or something. Well, you kind of acted like an easy target. Besides, I think my personality frightens people instead. Maybe I should work on that. Dude. Suddenly, the door swings open, revealing Kirado standing outside the bathroom. Dude, this is like the very first night you've been here, and you're going to come to the bathroom wearing a towel that is barely covering you? I freeze on the spot when I notice he's not wearing anything except for a towel hanging from his waist. Barely hanging from his waist! My, ga my gaze lingers on his fair build. He must have gone through a lot of training to achieve such a body. Stop staring! He looks fitting for the role of an investigator like this. Yeah, what am I thinking? Hirata does not seem to be aware that I was already in the bathroom. When he notices me, he looks at me from top to bottom. Okay, this is just not. I don't know what's going through his head, but he keeps staring. I wait for him to say something, but after a moment, I break the silence myself. Uh, were you planning on joining me or something? <laughs> Sorry. Hirata turns away and his cheeks are red and quickly closes the door. <laughs> I find his reaction funny. I'll let you off for now, because I'm to blame for forgetting to lock the door. Yeah, seriously. Knock next time. There's a muffled sound of agreement behind the door, followed by footsteps. He must have gone back to his room. I take a deep breath and close my eyes. I should have gotten mad, but he seemed to be more flustered than I am. Luckily, I have a towel around me. If he had come in at a different time, I would have not have let him leave unscathed. First day, and he's already causing trouble. Before I go to school, I leave some food on the table, along with a list of house rules. In the note, I also tell him not to make a mess out of my place while I'm gone. Alright, well... Been recording almost an hour, so I think that's probably a uh, decent amount of time. Got quite a bit uh, got more into the story. We maybe figured out who our person coming through the window was, if he's telling the truth. I'm still not sure if he actually had any picture ID or not, but... Um, so we've... I don't know if what we knew before that, uh... That our one friend's dad was an investigator. I don't remember if it was said before or not. But, uh... So I guess we kind of checked out the, uh... Abandoned house, but we really, we didn't, we really did not get much done since we met that other kid that was there. Um... Yeah, we just really don't know... Just don't know a lot of, uh, about what's going on yet, but it is, it does seem to be pretty interesting. I'm kind of glad we had more than just the, uh, prologue and stuff, that it didn't end when those credits popped up. That's what I thought, it was, I was like, oh, this is it, this is done. But it wasn't done, so I'm glad for that. Um, hopefully I won't just end one of these episodes and go back to playing and be like, oh, I had ten minutes of video left, I could have just finished it then. But, like I said, I think that's good for this uh, for this episode. We will hopefully find out a little bit more about what's going on next time. Um, I don't remember how long exactly, or like how many hours of gameplay this says it was. It was quite a few, though. I think that's why we're kind of dis discovering things fairly slowly. So, uh, but hopefully it'll... Hopefully things will start getting even more and more interesting uh, more quickly as we move on a little bit, but... Uh, Thank you all for watching this. Thank you. <laughs> we'll just cut it out right there. Cut. Thank you all for watching this episode. I appreciate anybody who uh, takes a chance and views this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're maybe getting into the story a little bit too. And uh, I'm uh, hoping to see you in a future video.